Right lads, so we're back for another video on the channel today. We've got eight more games in this season to move us on nicely. So in this first one, we have got third place in our group, RB Salzburg. So I've got to win this game, of course, and keep our distance ahead of Barca in first place. So let's see how we do. At the very least, all I can say, it's a solid 2-0 victory. Willikum de Pal score, and of course, um, our man of the match is Rodrigo de Pal got a 9.9 .9 as well. So yeah, very good result indeed. 2-0 against Salzburg. Now let's move on into the league where we've got Arsenal away at the Emirates. Let's go and get a win. It's a very nice day at the Emirates Stadium in North London. See the Sol Campbell Tifo in all its glory. Former player for both teams. Let's hope for winning this one. Let's see the teams. So this is the Arsenal team for this game. Matt Turner starts in goal with the back four of Cedric, Pablo Mari, Rob Holden and Zinchenko. Midfield three, Fabio Vieira, Brian Cristante as a captain and Thomas Partey. With Dembele, Jesus and Pepe as the front three. I'm not being funny. What the hell is this team? Their bench is stacked. Our team as well, obviously Pope starts in goal. We play 4-3-3 as well. Trippi is the captain with Guehi, Botman and Gavardial. Mitchell three, Depaul, Guimaraes and Joe Ellington with the forward line of Diogo Jota, Alexander Isak and Alexis Fager. Very, very strong team. Let's get into this gameplay. Hopefully, three points at the Emirates. Straight from kickoff, Isak's won the ball. A mistake from Arsenal. Can we make it one? Punish the early mistake. Two minutes into the game, straight from kickoff. That is absolutely woeful from this Arsenal defence. Brilliant goal from Isak, though. Hey, it's a good goal, though. 1 0 Newcastle. They're trying to get behind us. Oh, he's cut inside. What the hell is that pass? Oh, my God. As who scores, it's 1 1. Arsenal have recovered from that early mistake. Jesus Christ. Watch your profanity. Two and a half time, brilliant first half from the boys. Hopefully, it continues throughout the second half as well. Look at that run from Isak again. What? That's what happens when you have Rob Holden at the back, Arsenal. How do you not know that? What a save by Matt Turner. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, dear. What? Is, oh, nah. That's disgusting. They've had two pissing shots and they've scored both of them. Like, I know he sat me down and fair play, but... They do not deserve us. I'm absolutely livid about that keeping from Pope again. Five minutes later. Good interception. Diogo Jota trying to get past Pablo Mari, who gives the ball away again. Jota, how oh, is that not a penalty ref? Are you on crack? That is a that is a pure penalty. Is going to shoot from distance? Oh my God! Has he actually scored the winner? I don't even know what to say. That is absolutely tremendous from Bruno Guimaraes. He's absolutely twatted that one. I mean, he's definitely the best player in this team. What a goal that is. 3-2 Newcastle at the depth. What a goal. Oh, come on. Anthony Gordon off the bench, trying to get past Rob Holden. Can Anthony Gordon save it with another goal? Yes, he can. 4-2 to the Magpies. What a finish by Anthony Gordon. He's only just been introduced, really. He's not really had much of a impact as to say but that is a brilliant goal another good through ball by Jota as well and that is game set and match surely the final highlight well yeah it was indeed the final highlight as I said earlier with the two goals they scored they basically had two good chances um, Pope's other two saves were made in the same attack and they weren't really anything special so yeah I think we deserve that game on the balance of play. Not much possession, not many passes really, but we still deserve to win it as far as I'm concerned. I mean, Jesus gets man of the match, but his team lost by four goals to two. He got one goal and one assist. Whereas Isak scored both goals for us in two out of four. Gordon came on and changed the game, obviously, and Guimaraes was probably the best player um, on the pitch as he dictated the play, along with Rodrigo De Paul, to be fair. They're both very good, along with Guehi as well, who sort of picked up for Botman having a poor game. But yeah, that's still a good win anyway. Right, so now we have got the Gunners in the Cup. I'm not bothered by it. I'm going to sim it. We've got a simulation spree of three games coming up. Then we've got three games to play at the end of the episode. So let's see what we're doing this Arsenal game. We are at home for this one. Hopefully we're progressing the Cup, but I'm not bothered. It's Carabao. Right, so the B team did succumb to a 1-0 defeat against Arsenal in the Cup. But like they played a pretty strong team. So had, obviously, Ben Yedder and Dembele playing. They had Cristante, the captain, playing. Obviously, Saki came off the bench. Thomas Party played yet again. And we were playing people like Watts. So, yeah, I'm not bothered about that, but it is what it is. We've got, uh, I think it's West Ham in the Premier League now at home. Again, hopefully we carry on our nine-game winning streak, ten-game winning streak if we win that, and uh, continue to soar in the Premier League. So, see how we're doing that one. So, the main thing is we are still unbeaten 
as far as it stands. Ben Sibioni's opened the scoring for West Ham in the 51st. Willock scored in the 60th. Skamaka scored in the 69th. Something doesn't really do in real life, which is score. And then Gavardial gets his first Newcastle goal for a not too bad draw against the Hammers. As uh, who gets man of the match? Oh, Joska Gavardial and Isak both get a 7.4. So yeah, it's not too bad. Or all uh, all attention turns to the Champions League against RB Salzburg, where we're hoping to extend our chance of going through. So let's see how we're doing that one. Oh my God, what is going on? I mean, Pope's played this game again. He's conceded from both chances yet again and we draw two all against RB Salzburg which is not exactly fantastic as originally Barcelona did actually drop points against Celtic so they probably caught us up again we're both on eight points from the first four games I believe but yeah Susi Chopin the scoring for them in the first minute Vega and Isak put us ahead and then Koita scored in the 78th for a disappointing result it's got to be said Susi is fantastic by the way he might be a potential January signing after he showed in this game but that is that is a worrying result but anyway, again, attention's turned to the Premier League against Leicester City, away from home at the King Power. Let's see how we're doing that one, boys. Big game ahead. Right, so before anything happens in this Leicester game, this guy is really, really appealing to me and the potential setup of the future of the team. So his name is Elliot Sadler. He's 16 years old, 70 rated. He's got the potential of 88 to 94 and a whopping 79 dribbling and 71 passing with five-star week four. I'm going to call him up to the, to the, to the squad because this guy looks absolutely mesmerizing so yeah he's going to play in this Leicester game potentially off the bench but I'm thinking the future looks really bright in this one what a massive game this is Leicester are doing really poorly in the league in this season and they're going to hope for a win at the King Power but more importantly let's see our team for a big surprise so this is our team for this game Pope starts in goal again 4-3-3 we've got Trippier, Gwehi, Botman and Target midfield 3 Depal, Elliot Sadler in a free roll with Guimarães behind him then Jota, Isak and St. Mike's is the front three Elliot Sadler's Newcastle debut let's hope for a massive result come on Newcastle let's get another win not to concede straight away because they are attacking in numbers as they do get a chance Lucky back yo cuts the ball back it's a good save from Pope I guess he was on hand to tap it in I think it's Pats and Dakar and Leicester City lead 1-0 I mean it's not really against the run of play but yeah still 1-0 Leicester let's hope for improvement oh Gwe he's missed the ball against Jamie Vardy he can't do that Braybuck's got the lucky ricochet and they've got it again yeah if you don't want me to win just tell me what the hell is going on man what is going on here? Breakfast! How am I meant to defend that? They've just literally got three ricochets in a row. It's like playing four. Well, well, well. I think it might be time to make some subs because that was horrendous. Um, for sure, Jota's injured. He's going to have to come off because he cannot continue. He's hurt his shoulder. Um, I'll bring Miggy on for him. I think Willock should come on for Sadler. He's not had a bad game, but he's not really done much to be happy about and Isak can come off for Vega who seems quite good through the middle that's been a really poor first half I'm really really mad at the team so you know what we need to improve let's hope for a better second half What is that torch? Good run by DePaul. Can we get back in the game? Rodrigo DePaul. Yes, get in. That's a good goal. Pick up the ball. Pick up the ball. Pick, pick nope. up the ball. Pick, pick up the ball. Pick, pick up the ball. I actually don't care. In the slightest, I do not care. What a bad gameplay experience that was. I mean, I'm not saying they didn't deserve it, but like, for some reason, Jamie Vardy, who's older than my nan, was the best player on the pitch. He like he, he, I couldn't get the ball off him. He was quick, he was strong, he was good on the ball, which are all things he's not in real life. So, Mint. I mean, good one save, Pope. I appreciate that. Made the same amount of saves as Sergio Herrera. Good for you, you mug. I was being sarcastic. Oh, no, you're supposed to use a sarcastic voice. Now I look foolish. You are awful. Botman's been awful all episode. Gimarais has been awful all episode. Sadler had a really bad debut. You know what, it was just a bad game. I, I, I'm going to move on to the visual sim game. I don't know who we're against, but I, I literally, I just want to win. So let's win that game. If we can't beat scummy Leeds, I'm going to resign as manager. I, I'm genuinely being serious. I've had enough of this game today.
stats don't lie. 19 shots to three, five clear-cut chances and uh, a good all-round performance. I think a goal for Isak, goal for Jota and goal for DePaul. Very nice before the big game we've got next against Barca in the Champions League. So let's get into that one. So this is our team for this Barcelona game. Obviously, Saavedra starts in goal instead of Pope because Pope's been woeful this episode. We've got Trippier, Guahi, Botman and Gavardi are the usual regular suspects. Then we've got Depaul, Guimaraes and Sadler as the midfield three with Jota, Isak and Gucci Maxman as the forward trio. It's a very, very good team, but Barca's might just take the cake in this one. So Barca's team as well. To Stegen starts in goal with about four. Koundé, Hernandez, Christensen and the other Hernandez brother. Mitchell three, the captain, Kessi, Pedri and De Jong with Rafinha. Ferran Torres and Lewandowski as the forward three. Again, what a team that is. It's absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, let's get into this gameplay. Massive game ahead. Come on, you magpies. A so week off from left to right. Again, I say it every time. We need a good start, man. Oh, for God's sake. Looking for the Barcelona destroyer himself. Alan St. Maxman gets past his teammate. Can he make it? One no. Yes, he can. He's hit it over Mark andre Ter Stegen. It's a brilliant goal by Alan St. Maxman and that just goes to show how good we are on the break what a goal 1-0 Newcastle well, good play by Isak Koundé's got no chance keeping up with him there 1-0 against the run of play Sadler with a good bit of attacking football pulls it back Rodrigo de Pau makes it too that is a brilliant goal again Elliot Sadler at the heart of it he's not had the best episode only played in three of the games, I believe. One as a sub, one as a starter, and not had any impact. That's really good play all around, though, from the team. De Paul has a lot of time there. I, I was concentrating, so I couldn't really speak. What a goal! Two 0 Newcastle. What a what a game this is so far. Two 0 Newcastle. Barca are up against it. This could be four by the full time whistle. Oh, they're a good football inside. They really are. Oh, what what is that for football? De Jong's got a chance. It's the first shot in about 50 minutes of game time and uh, they've managed to find a way through Barca are back in this game very much against the run of play we need more more attacks now oh, by Frankie de Jong they're coming through the middle Barcelona what a save by Saavedra what a save indeed oh come on Sadler come on no 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 oh de Jong scored he's 100% scored for God's sake why is the game just turned like that I don't understand how that happens. I'm, I'm going to make some subs. I've, I've had enough of some of these strikers. Isak's been all right, but he's coming off. Um, Gordon can go through the middle. He can go there. He can go there. And he can go there. No, he can't because we've got no subs left. I'm absolutely livid because we were dominating him. Tostega made a few good saves. Well, a few worldy saves in the back in game already. Come on, let's get a win. Never seen that animation before. Oh, no. He's just gone too early. No, he hasn't. He's onside. Oh, my God. Is that is that Grimarius? He's just gone straight through the middle of Barca's defence. Because if it is, they offered £102 million in the summer for him. It is indeed. And we rejected it because he's too good to sell. It's 3-2. Instant impact from Vega as well. I thought they played the offside trap on us there. But he sneaked in. Oh, he's just onside. What a goal. Let's hold out for this win. Go on, I see that run, Anthony Gordon. Christensen, can you beat him for pace? You can indeed. Anthony Gordon, impact so we should have scored, but it doesn't matter because we've still won the game by three goals to two. Memorable night for the Geordie boys in uh, St. James's Park. What a tremendous game of football that was for the neutral. The stats don't lie, it was a very, very even game. I, I don't even know if we deserve to win that, but they did have a little bit of a spell of about half an hour in the second half where they dominated us. Saavedra made some excellent saves. They did have not one expected more goals than us. We had one more shot. Possession was even, passes was even. But yeah, very good game of football in general. I'm, I'm intrigued to see who the man of the match is. I mean, I didn't think he had a good game personally. I know he got a goal and an assist, but that was in the first 20 minutes where we were dominating the game. He was really poor towards the end. Gimaraes again had a very good game. I said he was poor in the, last, in the Leicester game, I think it was. But he's had a good episode in general. Uh, Gavardial was pretty good. Saavedra was my pick for man of the match. He was phenomenal in goal. Elliot Sadler had a decent little spell. Made a few passes. Probably the best passing accuracy on the team for this game. Made 11 passes out of 78. So yeah, he was pretty much the pass master on our side. Good game for him against the Blaugrana. And uh, yeah, these, these have got a very, very good team. I can't believe we've beaten, but obviously we have. Right, so our unbeaten run has come to an end. 
But uh, we've still had a good episode in the league, to be fair. I think we've won two, drawn one and lost one, so not too bad there. Um, with a potential, what is it, seven points out of a potential 12? It's not really bad, in all fairness. I don't know, seven points? Yeah, seven points out of potential 12, not too bad. Liverpool still remain unbeaten there on 30 points, one point behind us. I think we've got them to play in the next episode. So uh, top four still pretty weird though with West Ham in there. Aston Villa in fifth and City have, have dropped further behind as Man United are in seventh and Arsenal are now in 13th after their woeful start to the season continues. Isaac's a top scorer in the league though with 14 and 12. Another solid episode for him. Salah and Gakpo have caught up a little bit. They've got a bit of ground. Son and Kane are still there as well. And our next best scorer is Diego Jota who's got a respectable six goals to be fair. But that's what we've got for the goal scorers. So the calendar of the next episode, we start off with the away game at Stamford Bridge. First game, we'll play that. We've got Brighton and Hove Albion. That could be a play, could be a sim. Um, followed by Spurs away from home. That's a hard start. Celtic in the Champions League, we don't need to play that. Both Merseyside clubs, obviously, we did have Liverpool in that game. Then we've got um, Everton, as I say, one of the Merseyside clubs. We've got Brentford away whatever their stadium is called, the Brentford Community Arena Stadium, then potentially Aston Villa. If we play eight or nine games, that sounds about right to me. Because in the fifth episode, we'll be in the January transfer. We're going to make a couple more new signings and a couple of midfielders will add to the squad. That's all I've got for you today, guys. Obviously, this is the main story of the episode. Ignacio Saavedra, the regen of Claudio Bravo, has been a, a phenomenal in this episode. He's played two or three games, I believe. In my opinion, a star is born and uh, absolutely tremendous stuff. So I really appreciate watching as always. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the video on the new Cash United Cream Mode very, very soon. Thank you very much. Cheers.